here. I can't remember the site. I think this is from the thigh of, a, of an older adult, an elderly adult, actually. We see skin up here. But down below, we see a very large cellular tumor. And this was just the top of a very deep tumor. So another time where it's really rare to see this entity here with skin over top of it, because this tumor almost never occurs in the skin. I've never seen one primary to the skin, but every once in a while, a really massive one will grow up to the surface. Um, and so sometimes that happens. We have nodules, it's very cellular. And when we look closer, wow, look at the fascicle formation here these streaming fascicles, kind of similar to what we saw in that last case, but much more cellular, right? The nuclei are very closely packed together. There's a little bit of intervening collagen, but really the, the nuclei are close and touching all their neighbors. And then look at the pattern of the fascicles. Instead of that broad sweeping fascicle, where was the area? I meant to annotate this slide and I forgot to. Well, I mean, it's all of it's good, but I wanna find the best area. This pattern here is what? You can type it in the comment if you want. I'll give you a second. I'll just give you a second to admire it because it is so visually appealing, even though it often means something bad, unfortunately. This is herringbone. Well done, uh, Fred Chen. Excellent. And Dr. Lenskaya as well. Yeah, this is herringbone pattern. And in the olden days, people said sarcoma with herringbone pattern was fibrosarcoma. With modern technologies, we know that true adult fibrosarcoma is a vanishingly rare entity. And the majority of things that in the early half of the 1900s were called fibrosarcoma with modern techniques, they end up being other things like synovial sarcoma, which is what this is, or um, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor or DDIF liposarcoma. I've seen herringbone in all of those things. I've seen melanoma with herringbone pattern and a wide variety of others. In fact, I actually, yes, fibrosarcoma is DFSP, Laurent Kiss said that, excellent point. That can, fibrosarcoma is DFSP can totally have herringbone pattern. So my normal rule is if you see herringbone fibrosarcoma this pattern in the skin, you think of uh, fibrosarcoma is DFSP. This is one exception to that rule. Maybe I should have gotten a better section that was deeper down without skin. But in this case, this entire tumor, this was a big deep uh, muscle mass that we just had pushed up. So on imaging, this was clearly a deep mass and this was the wide local excision. And this section just had the very best uh, microscopic uh, morphology to show you the herringbone pattern. So the cellular um, area where the, where the fascicles run together or fishbone or chevron, you can use any name you like to, to, um, to describe this. But once you've seen it, it's like something where the, the, the fascicles coming together look like they're almost coming out of the screen or out of the slide at you. Like if you're old enough, like if you're old like me and you were around in the 1990s, there were these, these books called seeing eye puzzles. And if you like crossed your eyes and looked at it hard enough, all of a sudden it would get three dimensional and you'd see like a ship or a race car or some shape. And I think that that's what this reminds me of. It makes me feel like, whoa, it's like coming out of the screen. It's got like a three-dimensionality to you. Even though it's a flat piece of tissue, it looks three-dimensional. So whatever visual works for you, that's what works for me. This is herringbone. So you can describe it how you want. Just know how to recognize it. Yes, so you have to think of a lot of different things. And it is on my to-do list to make a herringbone extravaganza video to show you multiple different things that have herringbone pattern and that look very similar, but were totally different after um, uh, immunostain or molecular workup. So that's on my to-do list and I've actually started selecting slides for it. So keep a lookout, maybe that'll make it onto YouTube sometime in the next year. Okay, so in this case, we have those, those herringbone fascicles. We also have dilated um, vessels in some areas. So um, you can get kind of a staghorn dilated vascular pattern. It's common in synovial sarcoma, but it's also seen in a variety of other things. Of course, solitary fibrous tumor can have dilated branching vessels. Um, also fibrosarcoma is DFSP can. So what we would do here in this case, this is a monophasic synovial sarcoma and it was positive for uh, keratin and EMA would be positive here. And if you do TLE1, that will be positive. And uh, like Dr. Wardleman talked to you about uh, in the last lecture, it can be a useful stain, but it's not totally specific, okay? So I do find that for one thing, it can be finicky to get working in your lab. And sometimes it can have some patchy staining if it's not titrated correctly. So you, I really wanna see strong uh, staining um, to, uh, to call it that. And um, a lot of times, if I have anything that is uncertain on the stain, I just go to molecular. And now there is a newer stain. There are stains now for the fusion. So synovial sarcomas 
are a fusion between the SS18 gene and one of the three different SSX genes. And now there's actually a, um, a two different immunostains to detect that fusion uh, product. And I've only recently started to have experience with them and they in, so far have worked absolutely beautifully, really nice, very crisp staining. Um, and that's just come out in the past uh, few years, I think. So it may not be in your lab yet, but if you, um, if you can get it, that stain is great. Or if there's any doubt, fish. Fish can solve the problem, get fish for SS18 break apart. So um, to me, if it looks really good and the stains work, I'm happy to make the diagnosis of synovial sarcoma on uh, without any molecular. But in any case where there's some uncertainty, molecular will solve the problem. And like Dr. Wardle mentioned, remember that when you have a translocation associated sarcoma, usually you do not have pleomorphism. There are a few exceptions to that rule, but as a general rule, translocation associated tumors, all the nuclei look alike because they all have the same molecular abnormality, right? So you don't have random gains and losses like you have in aneuploid tumors like undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma or pleomorphic liposarc where you get small daughter cells and big daughter cells when the mitoses divide. Here, you don't have that. You have a translocation that's driving the tumor and all of the cells have the same translocation. So the cells of synovial sarcoma to me are kind of more plump and oval. They, they touch their neighbors and they of course run with these herringbone fascicles and you will usually find mitoses easily. Here's a mite, here's a mite there. They're all over the place, okay? I have seen some less cellular kind of more lower grade, well differentiated kind of looking ones and those can be pretty tricky. But usually those were just in some area of the tumor and elsewhere there was stuff that looked like this. And of course, you've probably learned about biphasic synovial sarcoma, where you have little gland um, structures made by epithelioid tumor cells, and then in the background is spindled and cellular like this. But I would say that I don't know what the exact rate is, but I see monophasic synovial sarcoma way more often than I see biphasic. So learn to recognize synovial sarcoma without seeing the glands. When you see the glands, uh, great, that's cool, but uh, recognize it based on the monophasic pattern, okay? So this was a synovial sarcoma. Oh, here, look. This is one of those areas I was talking about. See how this has more collagen in between? It's a little bit more pale, more spaced out. These can be pretty tricky. These areas kind of start like having overlap with that plantar fibromatosis I just showed you, right? It's not as cellular. So do be aware that you can have areas like this in synovial sarcoma, and that can be particularly tricky. I remember one case long ago on a needle biopsy. I did not think of synovial sarcoma at all. I actually thought it was going to be like low-grade fibromyxoid or something because it was bland and hypocellular and had some myxoid background. And then when the tumor was excised, no, it was totally synovial sarcoma. So um, you, usually it's easy to tell, but I have uh, had times before where it tricked me. So, and hey, again, look, ramen noodle, see it? So this is tumor invading through the fascia. It was coming up, I think, from the quadricep muscle through the fascia and obliterating the subcutis in this case. All right. Good example of synovial sarcoma. And I have a few other videos about synovial sarcoma on my channel, including a long one that shows lots of different variations. So if you're interested in that and want to see some different different uh, types of synovial sarcoma, go check that out if you'd like.